What's going on you guys, your brother in Christ Tony here and welcome to another Source of Light video. So I'm super excited about this video because I wanna talk about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will change your life 100%. The Holy Spirit, he is so important to a believer's life and he does not get enough recognition and I don't think he's nearly talked enough like he should be because it is very important for us believers to walk with the Holy Spirit. And now I know there's a lot of controversy with the Holy Spirit as if the Holy Spirit was just for back in the day and not for us anymore and that the Holy Spirit's weird and all these rumors and, and accusations and people want to believe it. And I think that's a deception from the enemy because as soon as we begin to walk with the Holy Spirit, power comes, peace comes, comfort comes. And I want to show that backed up by scripture because i'm not just saying this myself scripture said this actually jesus himself has something to say about the holy spirit so let's just jump right on into it i believe that this video will change your life because when i got revelation of the holy spirit completely changed my life and i'm still working towards it today i, I recently got this revelation and i'm working towards building my relationship with the holy spirit so i just want to jump in with some scripture just to uh, uh get it started we're going to jump to john 14:12. Now this is Jesus speaking himself. Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Jesus says we will do what he's been doing, but not he doesn't stop there. He says we will do greater things than what he has been doing. And then you, you might ask, okay, how? How are we gonna do these things? Jesus says, because I am going to the Father. That doesn't make sense, right? If Jesus is leaving us, you would think that the power will leave us, the comfort and the peace will leave us. But Jesus says, because I leave you, you will be able to do these things. That means when he leaves, there's an exchange happening. If he's gonna leave and we're gonna do greater things than he did, something better must take place. So he didn't stop there. That's exactly what's about to happen. Something better, a greater exchange is about to take place. If we jump, to John 16 7 this is Jesus speaking and he says but I tell you the truth it is for your good that I am going away he is going to the father it is it is for our good that he goes away unless I go away the counselor will not come to you but if I go I will send him to you Jesus says it is better that I go away because if I don't go away the counselor the Holy Spirit will not come to you, but because I am going to my Father, I will send him to you. Jesus says it's better that he leaves. Why? Because then we get the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, everything changes. When the Holy Spirit comes, we begin to do the works that Jesus did, but it doesn't stop there. We are able to do beyond what Jesus did because the Holy Spirit will live in us and with us forever. Now, Acts 1.8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we will receive power. All right, now check this out. Jesus, Jesus came down as man, right? He gave away his authority, his power, his reign as king. He came down on earth to become a man like you and me, but he was different. Obviously, he was perfect and sinless, but he became as a man to be an example for us. Yes, he was the son of God, but he was also the son of man. So when he came down to earth, he gave away all of his power and authority to become man just like us. He became an example. He became an example. Yes, he died, rose again after three days, saved us from our sins, gave us a place to go after this earth, completely grateful. He is our redeemer and our savior, but he came as an example. And when you look at the story of Jesus, from the time as a child all the way up to his baptism, there was no record of him doing any miraculous signs, any signs of wonders. He didn't heal people. He didn't do anything. But he started to heal people and you started to see signs and wonders after he was baptized. Why is that? What took place? Well, I'm about to show you. Let's jump to John 1, 32. John 1 talks about the baptism of Jesus. So John the Baptist, he said he's baptizing Jesus. And this is his record says in John 1 32, John gave this testimony. I seen the Holy Spirit when Jesus was baptized. I seen heaven was open and the Spirit of God descending like a dove and remaining on him. So John says, when I baptized Jesus into the water, when he came back up, the Holy Spirit, I seen the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God 
come down like a dove. It didn't say he come down as a dove, okay? He came down like a dove, remained, he descended on Jesus and remained on him. Wow. After Jesus received the Holy Spirit, he was, he was led into the wilderness. He's an example for us. He was led into the wilderness for 40 days. He fasted. He overcame the temptations of the devil. How? By the Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit was with him the whole time. Okay, now after that, we turn to John 2, John 2, 1 through 11. This is the first signs and wonders and, and the miracle that Jesus performed. It was him turning water into wine. We didn't get any record of him doing anything until John 2, 1 through 11. Why? Because in John 1, he was baptized and received the Holy Spirit. Acts 1, 8 says, when the Holy Spirit comes, you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit came, Jesus received power. Then he was able to go about doing wonders and signs and healing and rebuking and doing what Jesus did. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was on him. When we receive that same Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, when we receive that Spirit, everything changes. When we receive that Spirit, we begin to walk as Jesus did, but in greater. Okay, so here's some names that are given to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our helper, He's our comforter, he's our advocate, he's our intercessor, he's our counselor, our strengthener, our standby. The Holy Spirit is our helper and our comforter. I love those because when I need help, I get to call on the Holy Spirit who lives in me and is with me. I get to call on the Holy Spirit, he helps me, he comforts me. He's our standby. What does that mean? It, mean, he means, it means that the Holy Spirit is just waiting. Like if we don't communicate with the Holy Spirit, He's still waiting. He's our standby. He's right there waiting for us to acknowledge him. When we need help, he's our helper. When we need comfort, he's our comfort. He's our counselor. He's everything that we need. The Holy Spirit is here for you and me. We need to develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The enemy would love for us to sit back as defeated Christians. That's why I feel like the Holy Spirit has had so much bash and so much controversy because if we got the knowledge and the revelation of the power of the Holy Spirit, we would live as victors. And that's what I want to, I want to share that with you guys. Invite the Holy Spirit to come. I challenge you, just invite him. And if you say, I don't believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe that that was from back then and not now. Okay, well, let me give you this challenge. Just ask the Father, Lord, if the Holy Spirit is for me today, show me. Father, if the Holy Spirit is for me today, fill me with your Spirit and show me. And pray that. Because it's one thing for you not to believe it. It's another thing for you not to believe it and it's true, right? I, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's one thing if you didn't believe it, right? And the Holy Spirit wasn't true, but it's another thing if you didn't believe the Holy Spirit, but he is true and he is real and he is for today. So I would rather ask God to prove it to me rather than me just make a decision myself, right? Because if there's so much controversy, I'd rather be like, all right, Lord, what's the answer here? So I challenge you, ask the Lord, Father, if the Holy Spirit's real, Will you show them to me? Will you prove them to me? And the Father will do that. Let me give this last illustration of the Holy Spirit. There's, there, the Holy Spirit is a part of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And, and a spiritual leader shared this and it just, it stuck with me ever since. So you have the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, okay? So you have God. God created the heavens and the earth, created all things, right? He did his part. Seven days he created everything. Now he's up in heaven. He's the king of over, over everything. He's looking down on his children. He's maintaining everything. Okay, so God did his part. Now he's in heaven, still doing what he's supposed to do. Jesus was sent. Jesus came down and did his part. He saved us of our sins. He was an example for us. He did what he did. Now he was raised from the dead. Now he's seated in heaven. Okay, where's our help? That's why Jesus says he will not leave us as an orphan. Jesus will not leave us as orphans here on this earth, but he'll send us his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is now sent to us to be with us on this earth to help us and to be right with us and in us everywhere we go. That is so comforting knowing that we have a heavenly father, we have Jesus up in heaven caring for us, protecting us. Jesus is interceding on our behalf to the heavenly father, but it didn't stop there. They sent the Holy Spirit down to be here on earth for us. That changes everything, realizing that, okay, the Holy Spirit was sent here for me to help me, to comfort me, to strengthen me, to, to counsel me. The Holy Spirit, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will walk with power, according to Acts 1.8. And Jesus himself says, we will do the works that he did, but greater. So I encourage you guys, invite the Holy Spirit, talk to the Holy Spirit, communicate with the Holy Spirit, because if you're dealing with fear and anxiety, the Holy Spirit, 
he is the best person to go to. If you're dealing with discomfort, you know, addiction, uh, confusion, the Holy Spirit is your comfort. He is the one you should go to and ask for that strength and that help when you need him. So I hope that helped today, guys. If you have any questions on the Holy Spirit, please ask. Ask any question. I don't want arguments or debates to happen, just genuine questions. If you're like, okay, I don't believe in the Holy Spirit because I think he's weird, ask me. Let me say this. Weird people make the Holy Spirit weird, okay? The Holy Spirit is a part of the Trinity. All right, if you think the Holy Spirit weird, then you must think that Jesus is weird and you must think that God is weird, but they are not weird. So weird people make the Holy Spirit weird, all right? So I just want to say that any questions, please leave it down below. If there's any video requests, feel free to leave it down below. I would love for any requests because um, I love I, I love talking about the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's a revelation that I've just been getting more of, and I want to develop my relationship with him as well as encourage you guys to. Well, yeah, anyways, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I love you guys so much. Let's do what Jesus did, but do greater works than he did because the Holy Spirit. I love you guys. Jesus loves you more, and let's change the world. Peace.